Hi, in this video, I want to show you how to manage projects and programs with Atlassian Confluence. The first technique we're going to use is for using status reporting and dashboards. One of the challenges I always see is you're trying to assimilate different status reports across a large project or a large program where you have multiple work streams that you need to keep track of. Now in a program, you could have three projects running. In a project, you may have a number of key work streams that you want to get status on. And in this example, I'm using Confluence to build a very simple dashboard uh, to where I'm pulling in relevant data specific to launch dates, the phase of that project, overall status, as well as looking at individual status points, similar to the red, yellow, and green indicators that you typically get with scheduled budget issues and risks. So let's dive a little bit deeper and take a look at a status report. So in this example, I have a very simple status report uh, that has all the elements that you typically see in project status. You have a sponsor, you've got a lead, you've got uh, the phase that a project may be in, as well as overall launch date, status, schedule, and, and so on. The typical indicators that you get in a project status report. Uh, if it were the project was red, I could put a go to green plan. I could also highlight what the major accomplishments are this week, as well as what's being planned for this week. So in execution, each of the project leads or project managers would complete a weekly status report within Confluence. And then you see here I have different status reports, which may be red or yellow or green, depending on the health of each project within the given program. So in this case, we're building out a corporate intranet, an order management system, and a call center implementation, all part of a large program initiative. But then by simply changing the colors in the sub pages, you'll get updated values here. So it builds a very simple and easy, da easy dashboard. The benefit of this approach is you can do real-time status reporting or have your project managers can update specific reports and dashboards without having to fill out another Excel template or fill out a PowerPoint presentation. One of the challenges I always saw when implementing programs or even running a PMO is you have to get the latest version of the status. And even though you define checkpoints or endpoints as to when you need to receive those status reports, you're always trying to fit in one last slide or one last Excel spreadsheet uh, into the presentation for the rest of the executive team. By consolidating your status reporting within Confluence, you can get real-time status. So if anyone needs to make an update, they can go in, make the update in the status report, and this status report and dashboard will go ahead and report accordingly. Uh, and you can use this for having multiple pages or multiple status reports. In this example, I just use three within a given program. The next example of how you can use Atlassian Confluence to manage your projects and programs is using action items. Now action items, they come out of every project manager's meeting. And it's always a pain to figure out who's doing what, where the latest meeting minutes were, and who's actually responsible for next steps. Or, and when they take those next steps, do they actually complete them? So in this example, I have rolled up all of the action items from other status reports or other meeting minute notes uh, into one summary view. So I can pull these together and quickly check off and determine, did somebody complete their activity within a given point in time? So let me show you how this is done. Uh, within the team meetings, in this, in this example, there's a very brief set of notes. You're able to tag an individual as well as put a brief description of what the action is. And then you can actually assign due dates. And you see here that this uh, item is red because it's well past the February 7th date. Uh, so in this case, the person is overdue with this given task. If I were to complete that task, it would eventually turn gray and uh, gray out the actual activity. The following week, there were another a number of action items that were incurred. These are also documented in a checklist as such. And you can also have a steering committee meeting notes. So it doesn't have to be just a team meeting format. It could be any type of a page. If you have um, a checklist and you're able to assign a resource as well as assign a date, the macros that you use will be able to pull this together into one uh, action item list that you see here. And I've used this technique on large projects and programs where you've got a ton of people all working um, in different meetings and in different work streams. Yet we're all trying to come together with a common action item list that we need to work on uh, to make sure the project is a success. 
And by using this approach, you're able to get one large action item list that everybody can review and quickly get um, status at a glance. You know, another feature that I use is if you have completed those action items, this is a neat feature because if I've actually completed these two action items and I refresh, what you'll see is the completed action items will populate down below over here. And so now you see there's more action items that have actually been completed by the time you come back to this page. So you can use this as a way to organize your open and, act and closed action items accordingly. The next example of how you can use projects and programs with Atlassian Confluence is the Gantt chart and the roadmap tool. I find this tool to be invaluable with building a very simple Gantt chart that executive management can understand as well as your project team. I include this roadmap format in every one of my uh, presentations when I'm doing a project kickoff because you know there's a lot of different ways that you can build Gantt charts. You can use Microsoft Project, you can use Smartsheets. I've seen people use Excel to try to draw and build out these different views. But by using the roadmap macro, it's really easy to go in and make adjustments uh, to each of the different lines of what's in project status. So you can use these different bars and you can change the direct duration of those bars. You can change the length of those bars. You know, it's a very simple and easy drawing tool that allows you to identify milestone dates, uh, you can add different lanes. So if you had different phases, if you're trying to convey the major phases of a program, also trying to color code and getting a sense of who's doing what, you can organize that accordingly based on the work streams that you have here. And you can assign uh, individual milestones, which I find is always helpful as you're trying to convey a very easy way to determine what is the roadmap or what is the Gantt chart looking like. Uh, if you try to do this in Excel or PowerPoint, you know what a pain this is because you're having to do a little more arts and charts in a tool that's really not designed for arts and charts. Uh, but that's why I love the Roadmap Planner. Uh, so this is an easy macro that comes with that lasting confluence that you're able to use in reference. Um, you know, what's also nice is I can take each of these phases or you can take each of these work streams and you can build other roadmaps. So you can have a program level roadmap and then you can look into either a Gantt chart uh, at a more detailed level for this given phase. So in this case, you see here, you've got several milestones for sign off, configuration complete, user acceptance testing, and hitting your key launch date. So we can manage at a more detailed level if we need to get into those levels as well. So just a couple different ways that can use the tool. Um, what I also like is with this solution, you're also able to configure each of these bars and you can link to a specific confluence page. You can also put a description uh, where, and I like to use end dates, but if you want to get into another Confluence page about what is baseline configuration about or what those configuration requirements are, you can link directly to it. And now this brings up uh, another requirements page that I use. If we're trying to identify what the major requirements are for configuration, what's its importance. Um, you know, overall, it's an online wiki that we're able to make modifications here. But the power is being able to build a very simple roadmap that you can convey and send out to your audience and include in other presentations. In this example, I'm going to show you how you can use an issue and risk log with an Atlassian Confluence. So what I've done here is I've just drawn a very simple table. And you know that table is, allows you to keep track of open and closed issues. So in this case, I've built the table with a common status, work stream, identified by, uh, identified date, issue description, and so on. Uh, it's a typical issue log that you might build in Excel. But the power with this is it's a collaboration platform. So it just, just doesn't have to be myself going in to update the issues. Any team member can go in and update the appropriate issues as such. Uh, again, we can use the status macro to identify open or closed status. You can assign end dates. You can tag and assign resources as well as track how those uh, issues and risks are progressing. Now, if you were to close that issue, what you can do is you can either leave it within the table format or there's another option. Uh, what I've been playing with is using the expand macro, we can view the open and closed issues. So in this case, what I do is if I have a closed issue, I just move it out of this table and I paste it below here. So it's a little more manual, but it's another nice way to be able to look at just the open issues that you need to be concerned about. But if you wanna go back in, you can use these macros to get into the closed issues. Again, just another effective way to manage an issues list within the tool. 
And I should mention that this is all being done with the native version of Atlassian Confluence. There are other uh, paid macros and or paid uh, plugins that will allow you to sort and filter a table. But in this example, it's using pure Atlassian Confluence to build and manage your issue and risk log. The next example of how I like to manage requirements uh, with Atlassian Confluence is, you know, there's a couple different macros that come. There is a, a standard product macro template that you can use to build out requirements within the tool. And, you know, in this case, you're able to go into, say, uh, if I was building a bookshelf editor. And what I've done is this is a standard product requirements template that comes with Atlassian Confluence. You see here I've added in different milestones. You can build out a table for requirements if you have open questions. It really is a nice template that you can use, but then it rolls up um, to a table that shows you the individual uh, pages as well as who's the document owner, what's the status, so you can get a sense of where those major requirements are fitting. And you know that's one way that I've seen teams use Atlassian Confluence to do that. Another method which I really love is building a requirements traceability matrix. Uh, often with Confluence, you're using Jira to track detailed requirements, or if you're running uh, an agile team or a sprint, you have a variety of issues that are listed within Jira. And I find it's important to be able to relate that back to a higher level requirements document. Because no, when you first start a project, you start documenting high level requirements and you're not ready to put that into a product backlog just yet. You may have a user writing, user story writing workshop you may have a discovery session, and it's not always neat and tidy for where those requirements are going into JIRA. So I find it's helpful to start out with uh, summarizing your notes and putting them into a format that people can understand as you realize these are the high level requirements for the system that we're building. And then you're able to take those same requirements and decompose them as user stories within JIRA. And what I've done here is I've actually linked the JIRA ticket uh, into the Confluence page. And this way, when something is actually completed, I can do requirements traceability and I very easily determine, did this requirement get built within the solution? So this is one easy way to do a dashboard. Um, and all I've done is I've dragged over the JIRA issue into Confluence when I was in edit mode. So you see here, I have all the JIRA issues that are listed. And in this case, I can edit that link and it automatically pulls in the JIRA uh, issue that you see. So I'll show you that one more time. If I were to go ahead and edit that link, you just copy and paste the actual JIRA link here, and it'll nicely display these uh, issues in this list. And you can also link out to other Google uh, documents, other links, other, attach other notes. But you see here, it's just a very easy way to elaborate on your requirements and, and build a solution that allows you to see um, what are all the different requirements that you're trying to keep track of and where does it stay in terms of importance and what's the link to the actual you know, operational execution. And if you need to, you can go ahead and click on these links and I'll take you into JIRA accordingly. Another example of how I like to use Atlassian Confluence to manage projects and programs is actually in my one-on-ones. Um, this is a format I've used for years, and I used to create this in a Word document and send out the Word document to uh, my immediate manager. Or I used a uh, PowerPoint template to be able to create this. What I found is helpful is being able to use Atlassian Confluence to keep track of the major status reports of what's going on within the portfolio, as well as convey what are the major projects that I'm working on or that I have oversight on, and I want to provide executive management, um, in this case, my boss, with a, with a direct one-on-one -on -one update of you know, what's really going on within each of these projects. Um, also within the status report format, you can uh, document your key issues and risks, as well as if there's any other uh, information that's coming up for, you know, for example, next steps or if you're going on vacation. Um, and, and I've also included other presentations or other screenshots for relevant information that I want to talk to uh, with my boss. And again, I found this just to be a very useful way to keep track of those one-on-one -on -one status meetings. Because um, then at the end of the year, I just go into Confluence and I'm able to very easily go through my list of one-on-one -on -one statuses and uh, help review and prepare for my annual review and as I try to you know, summarize what my accomplishments were. Um, you know, I will mention that when you do this and you're putting this into Confluence, it's, it's personal. So what you wanna make sure is you do go in and set the appropriate restrictions within your Confluence site 
Uh, so you only specify certain people that can get access to this document. Uh, and then I would share that with the person I'm, I'm trying to share the document with. But it's just another useful way of how we can use project management techniques to do one-on-one -on -one status with your direct manager, or if you needed to write up summaries uh, within the organization to present status and, and the overall health of a project or program. Now, I know we covered a lot in this little tutorial, uh, just giving you a high-level overview or a demonstration of what you can do with Atlassian Confluence to manage your projects and programs. If you're interested in learning more and you'd like a step-by-step -step tutorial, feel free to visit tacticalprojectmanagement.com and scroll on down. I've got a step-by-step -step product guide on how to manage projects and programs with Atlassian Confluence. Thank you.